A glorious second Easter Sunday to all of us. Opo, tayo napapaloob pa rin sa Easter season na patuloy nating ipagdiriwang hanggang Pentecost Day. Alvin Barcelona po muli na nangangamusta sa inyo. Kamusta yung inyo naging Holy Week? Alam ko, ibang iba dahil nasa mga tahanan lang tayo lahat at patuloy pa nga ang quarantine ngayon. But I'm sure the Lord continues to bless us wherever we are. At uh, hayaan niyong ako'y patuloy na magbigay ng espesyal na mensahe sa ating online feast ngayon. At uh, ngayong second Sunday of Easter ay uh, Divine Mercy Sunday din. At marami sa inyong nakakaalam na ako ay uh, devotee ng Divine Mercy. Diyan nagsimula ang miracle story ni Brother Alvin. Pero naniniwala ako na tayo ay deboto sa banal at dakilang awa ng Diyos. Eh, tingnan niyo, pag tayo kinakamusta, um, Kamusta ka na? Ang madalas sa sagot ng Pilipino, eto, sa awa ng Diyos, nakakaraos, nakakatawid, sa awa ng Diyos, buhay pa rin. I believe God's final word is His mercy. Kahit nga last minute, eh. di ba? isa sa mga seven last words na napakinggan natin ay yung magnanakaw, yung criminal, kahit na siya yung mamamatay na, pero nakatagpo ng kaligtasan nung tinanggap niya si Jesus at ang kanyang kapatawaran. Kaya naniniwala ako itong crisis na ito, ang lahat ng ito will lead to the victory of Jesus by His grace and by His mercy. Itong linggo ito ay tinatawag din Doubting Thomas Sunday. <laughs> Una sa lahat, gusto ko namang sabihin unfair naman ata kay Thomas kung yung doubting lang niya ang ating maaalala. Minsan kasi tayong mga tao, ang naaalala lang natin at nagmamarka yung kahinaan o yung sablay o yung kapalpakan ng isang tao, di ba? Hindi na tayo nakamove on doon. Sa totoo lang kasi, si Thomas ang isa sa mga matatapang na apostolis ng Panginoong Jesus. Katunayan, uh, nung nag-preach siya, ay uh, umabot hanggang India at doon siya na martyr. Tanggang ngayon, tinuturing siya patron saint ng India. At si Thomas yung nagsabing, My Lord and My God. Aba, di ba sinasabi pa natin yan pag tinataas yung ostya o yung banal na Eucharistia? At siya, sinawag niya si Jesus na My God. Ha? Professing Jesus' divinity. Ha? At hindi siya pinigilan ni Jesus doon. Ibig sabihin, talagang isang pagpapatunay na si Jesus nga ay Diyos. At yun ay sinabi niya nung muling nagpakita si Jesus sa kanya. Ha? Kaya magandang basahin natin yung account na yan. No? At yan din ang Ebanghelyo ngayon. Uh, mababasa natin sa John 20 verses 19 to 31. Yun lang mga uh, related kay Thomas. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. Thomas said to them, Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger on those scars and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Pagbigyan naman kasi itong si Thomas, sinabi pa talaga niya na hanggat hindi ko nalalagay yung daliri ko sa mga sugat ni Jesus, hindi ako maniniwala. <laughs> sa totoo lang. Si Tomas lang ba yung nag-alinlangan? Hindi ba? Halos lahat naman ng mga apostolis katunayan eh. Hindi ba? Si Pedro nga eh. eh he even denied Jesus three times. Maayon si Juan eh, lang ang, ang, hanggang kamatayan ni Jesus sa cross ay nando doon. At nung tumakbo sila sa empty tomb, sinasabi doon uh, the, the apostle whom Jesus loved believed. No? Pero Halos tama, lahat naman sila ay nagkaroon ng pag-aalinlangan. Si Tomas nang siguro yung malakas na honest na nagsabing openly na, na nagduda siya. Isa pa, hindi ba kinakatawan din tayo ni Tomas sa oras ng ating mga pagdududa? Tayo din naman may mga bouts of doubt at gusto natin ng preba na makita nating lalo ang Diyos. Lalong-lalo na sa mga pagsubok. Hindi ba sinasabi nating hindi na ako maniniwala sa Diyos kung hindi niya pagagalingin ang, ang mahal ko sa buhay na may sakit o nasaan ang Diyos hindi pa dumadating yung tulong sa amin ng gobyerno o, o, hindi na ako maniniwala sa Diyos pag di binalik ang trabaho ko ang negosyo namin minsan din naman tayo ay kinakatawan namang ni Tomas sa mga panahon na tayo ay naghanap ng preba upang tayo higit na maniwala kay Jesus pero patuloy natin na basahin na a week later, the disciples were together again indoors, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Then reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. 
Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Do you believe because you see me? How blessed are those who believe without seeing me. And I believe Jesus wasn't just talking to Thomas. He was talking to all of us. Na mapapala tayo kahit hindi natin nakita ang Panginoong Jesus, tayo naniniwala. Pero sinasabihan din niya tayo na hindi natin kailangang makita siya upang tayo maniwala. That we must have eyes of faith and not just by sight. Pero ito pa ang higit kung gustong pagnilayan pa natin. Ha? Kita niyo ang Panginoon. How He dealt with Thomas. Hindi ba nung siya nagpakita na ha? kay Thomas at sa mga apostoles, sapat na yun upang manalig si Thomas? Ha? Na namuli siyang nabuhay? Pero hindi. Jesus went further by telling Thomas, Thomas, halika, hawakan mo <laughs> ng iyong daliri ang aking mga sugat sa kamay at sa aking tagilihan. Ano, tinutuya ba ni Jesus si Thomas na ayong pang maniwala ito hawa? Or was Jesus meeting Thomas where he was? Alam niyo yung ibig sabihin kung, kung kailangan Thomas na hawakan mo ako, halika, para manumbalik ang iyong paniniwala. Parang sinasabi ng Diyos, kung kailangan uh, mabuhay ka muli o gumaling o dumating ng tulong para maniwala ka, ipadadala ko yan. Of course, we're not manipulating Jesus. Of course, natin sinasabing si Jesus ay susunod sa lahat ng ating pagdududa, maniwala lamang tayo. But, but again, this is the God of mercy na who will meet us where we are. With the hope, of course, that we do not stay where we are. Kasi nung pinagpakitaan at pinahawak pa ni Jesus si Tomas sa kanyang mga suga, nag-level up si Tomas. Kaya nga nasabi niya, my Lord and my God. No, at tayo din ay mag-level up kapag muli natin napatunayan ang buhay si Jesus. O hindi na natin kailangan pa ng patunay. But again, look at the mercy of Jesus. The divine mercy. Kasi hindi eh, ba, dapat nagalit siya kay Tomas. O alika ka dito, hawakan mo yung, yung sugat ko. O naniwala ka na. Pero dahil ikaw ay nagduda, hindi ka nakasama sa samahan ito. Hindi ka na pwedeng magpatutuo na ako'y muling nabuhay dahil ikaw ay nagduda. No! He, he re-established Thomas. He, he, ha? Thomas continued to be an apostle. At tulad nga nang sabi ko sa inyo, umabot pa ng India na siya'y nagpatutuo. Jesus was meeting Thomas where he was as he continues to meet you where you are. Katunayan, ito pa ang isipin niyo kapatid. Ha? May sugat si Jesus. May pekla, may scar na pinakita. Bakit? Bakit siya patuloy na may, may pekla? <laughs> Hindi ba dapat sa kanyang resurrected body ay perfecto na ito? Dapat wala ng mga sugat? Ah, pero dinala pa rin ni Jesus ang kanyang mga sugat para ipakita kay, initially kay Tomas, para siya maniwala, if only to heal Thomas, if only uh, the, the wounds were there, if only to let Thomas believe. And Isaiah says that. By His wounds we are healed, by our doubt, by our sins. At kapatid, ito ang isipin niyo. Dinala ni Jesus ang kanyang mga marka ng sugat para sa atin. Para lalo siyang mangusap sa atin. Hindi niya ito tinago. Anong ibig ko sabihin? Kasi tayo ngayon, tinatago natin yung mga sugat natin, yung mga pekla. Di ba? Ang dami mga produkto para burahin at itago yung ating mga pekla. No, para maging flawless ang ating katawan. At kahit sa ating isip, sa ating puso, sa ating kaluluwa, may mga sugat na tinatago natin. No? Kaya nga minsan, pag tayo ay kinakamusta, oh, kamusta ka na? Okay ka ba? Oo, oh, okay ako, okay ako. Kahit sa totoo ay hindi. Kasi ang mas pinakikita natin madalas ay yung ating katapangan, <laughs> yung ating tagumpay, yung ating mga achievements, yung ating mga medalya, yung ating mga tropeyo, yung ating kabanalan na tayo laging nagsisimba, tayo laging nagdadasal. Kabisado natin ang Biblia. Maganda naman yan. Hindi ko naman sinasabing masama yan. Pero kailangan ba natin itago ang ating mga sugat, ang ating mga kahinaan, ang ating mga sablay? Hindi ba ang aklat na ito mismo ay hindi itinago ang mga naging sablay mula kay Abraham, kay Moses, kay David, hanggang sa mga apostoles, hanggang sa unang pinagpakitaan ni Jesus nung siya muli na buhay. Si Magdalena, isang babaeng makasalanan. Oo, nagbago si Magdalena. At oo, sa, sa, sa biyaya at awa ng Diyos, si Magdalena ay nagkaroon ng panibagong buhay. Pero ba't hindi nang pakita sa si Jesus sa mga mas banal? Bakit sa isang dating makasalanan? Pinakikita sa atin na tayong lahat ay may pag-asa na kahit tayo ay sugatan, may pag-asa tayong makita natin si Jesus. 
Kaya mga kapatid, ang Panginoong Yesus ay dumaan sa, sa, sa kwento natin na tayo ay dumaan sa pagsubok, sa paghihira. Mas matindi pa nga yung dinaan ng Panginoong Yesus. No man has ever experienced at kinurunahan ng tinik, hinagupit at pinabuhat ng mabigat na krus at nadapa, nagkasugat-sugat at, at pinako sa krus habang siya iniwanan ng kanyang mga kaibigan at, 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 at siya'y naidor at pinagtaksilan pa. Kaya sinasabi niya kapatid na kung ikaw ay pinagtaksilan, iniwanan ng mga kaibigan, ng mga mahal mo sa buhay, ikaw ay nasugatan, ikaw ay nadapa, ikaw ay nilagay sa isang madilim na lugar, naintindihan ka ni Jesus. Kasi pinagdaan na ngayon. Kaya tayo minsan, nung gusto nating sabihin yung ating mga achievements, yung ating righteousness, yung ating holiness, okay yan, nakaka-inspire yan. Pero may mga tao na mas kanilang kadiliman, sa kanilang paghihirap, sa kanilang lungkot, sa kanilang pagdududa, ang mas makakabigay sa kanila, makakakonek sa kanila, ay yung nagdaan din doon. Kaya kung sasabi mo sa isang tao na nahihirapan, ah, alam mo, pinagdaanan ko din yan. May mga sugat din ako yan eh. Ah, at alam mo, ako din nagdude. Ah, ako din nag-alimlangan. Pero si Jesus, ah, nagpakita siya sa aking buhay. Pinatawad niya ako. Kaya ako nakabangon. Doon lang magkakaroon ng, ng pag-asa ang, ang ating kapwa. Kaya you know, our scars, our wounds may show our imperfections, our weaknesses, our failures, but it will show God's mercy to us. And it will lead others to God's mercy. It will lead others to their resurrection. Katunayan, ang muling pagkabuhay ng Panginoong Yesus ang nagpakita sa atin na walang imposible na kahit tayo ay dumaan din sa, sa madidilim na, na nakalipas ay maaay na tayong buhayin muli. Kaya, mga kapatid, sa pagdiriwang natin ng resurrection, let's also celebrate God's mercy. And let's also celebrate the wounds and the scars that we have because this too will be used by God to heal others. Kaya sa pagtatapos po ng aking pagbabahagi sa inyo, nais kong magpakita sa inyo ng isang music video ng aking awitin na pinamagatang kong I'm Possible. Dahil yun ang pinakikita ng resurrection, nothing is impossible to God. At sa iyo, walang imposible. And we can do all things through Christ who empowers us. And we can do all things by God's mercy. At sa video na ito, pinakita ko pa ang ilang mga tao na dumaan sa mga matitinding pagsubo sa kanilang kalusugan, sa kanilang pag-aaral, sa kanilang mga pangarap, sa kanilang mga kapansanan, o kahit pa nga sa pag-ibig, ay pinakita ko dito mga snippets, no? At, at pinakikita ko sa inyo na muli walang imposible sa Diyos that, that you are possible. Masasabi nyo, I'm possible. Be blessed. I know I can do more I know I can be more I feel I can live more I'm possible I believe I can see more I believe I can dream more Feel I can love more. I'm possible. They say my time is done. They say my chance is gone. But they don't see the one who makes me possible. I know 
I can do more I know I can be more I feel I can live more I'm possible I believe I can see more I believe I can dream more I feel I can love more I'm possible They say my time is done They say my chance is gone Cause they don't see the one who makes me possible. I'm possible. I'm possible. I invite you to pray the prayer to the Divine Mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You died, Jesus, but the source of life flowed out for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fountain of life, immeasurable divine mercy, cover the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which flowed out from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. Jesus, King of mercy, we trust in you. Jesus, King of mercy, the whole world trusts in you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now be blessed by our preachers, Brother Tony Valenzuela and Brother J.C. Libina. Maraming salamat, Brother Alvin Barcelona. Once again, to all of our viewers, thank you so much for hooking on and plugging in to our PM Feast live stream. Today, we have our fourth talk, ang fourth installment natin with our ongoing series, The Best Preaching Ever. And ang title for our message today is More Than a Makeover. Alam niyo mga kapatid, ako ay isang theater actor, Commercial model, yes. And I love to host events, freelance events host ako. And whenever I prepare for these events or stage plays or commercials, syempre kailangan may makeover. Kailangan mag-makeup, magsuot ng maganda. And that's one of, one of the wonderful things that I love about performing. And every time I always prepare, kailangan maayos. And it adds, it adds confidence, no? It adds a certain level of angas, kumbaga. But in real life, when all these things are said and done, wala na yung lights, wala na yung stage, wala na yung attention sa'yo, reality hits you that we are more than just what we are outside. We are more than a makeover. In fact, reality is, is that when it goes deeper, it is a heart problem. More than what we look outside, we have a heart that goes deeper than what we see on the outside. That's why our one big message, our take-home message for all of us today, is that God is after your heart. Yes, God is after your heart. But before we go to our message for today, let's pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. 
And let's come before our God who is always with us wherever we are and make the sign of His love for us, name the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And together, let's say our favorite prayer at the feast with conviction and with hope, faith, and love in our hearts as we say, Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved, I am God's servant, and I am God's powerful champion. And because we are blessed, we are blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And because of that, let's lift up our hands and give praise to His Word as we sing with all our hearts. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. And let's read from the Word of God. And if you have your Bibles with you, I hope you do have your Bibles with you. We go straight to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 20. Ayun, I'll give you a few minutes or a few seconds to find your Bibles. And let's go to Matthew 5, 17 to 20. And it reads, and just to give a background, we are still on the Gospel of Matthew. And we are going to go deeper. This is like a Bible study. Huh? So we hope that you are with others that you can also go deep and dive into the Word. Here we go. Matthew 5, 17 to 20. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I have come to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear not even the smallest detail of God's word will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Can I ask for you to put your hand over your chest and pray with me? Jesus, thank you for coming into my life today. Jesus, transform me, change me, make me a new creation, make me a new person. Create in me a new heart, O oh God, and put in me a new spirit. Because today, I choose to follow you, not out of obligation, but out of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And again, we lift up our hands and give praise to His Word as we sing together. offering of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, O God, for your word and for your love. Yes, God is after your heart. Kung may kasama kayo ngayon, can you please just nudge that person beside you and tell that person, God is after your heart. May konting kwento lang ako. Okay lang po ba? Because when I was younger, I wa when I was siguro high school, sakto, kaka-start ko lang mag-high school, and, siyempre, lumaki ako sa ibang bansa. For those who don't know yet, lumaki ako, pinanganak at lumaki ako to OFW parents. I grew up in Bahrain, yan, sa Middle East. Napakaliit na island, desert island po ito sa Middle East, Bahrain. And ako ay panganay. And I'm the eldest of the family. 
Siyempre, nung bata pa kami, eh, my parents were always, uh, you know, working, bahay, trabaho, bahay, trabaho. So, nung bata pa kami, elementary pa ako, ni yaya kami. Pero nung nag-high school na ako, hindi na ma-afford ng parents ko ng yaya, ng housemate. So, automatic, ako ang naging housemate. Ako ang nagiging yaya ng bahay. So, tinitrain ako ng mother ko, ng mommy ko that time. And bilang panganay, ako din ang tag-alaga din sa mga kapatid ko. At first, when I was learning how to do house chores, syempre, alam natin mga teenagers, they would love to enjoy life, go out, be with friends, kasamang barkada. So I was not always welcoming. I was having a hard time to pick up yung training na yun from my mom kung paano maghugas ng plato, paano maglinis ng bahay, paano maglaba, paano magluto. At the age of 12, ayoko nga ayoko ng mga bagay na yun. Siyempre, no, teenager, gusto ko mag-enjoy. Pero I had to learn those things. Sa una, talagang, ah, bakit ko kailangan gawin to? Bakit ko kailangan mag-alaga yung mga kapatid ko, yung bunso pa namin, baby pa noon? But later on, as the years went by, I decided to enter the seminary. Na-inspire ko na pumasok sa seminary at magpare nung high school pa ako. Kasi I was also active in church, in the youth community I was in in our parish sa Bahrain. And after graduating high school, siyempre, ano pa? Yes, independent! Nakalaya na ako! After leaving high school at pumunta ko dito sa Pilipinas, pumasok ako sa seminaryo muna dahil na-inspire ako magpare. And when I entered the seminary, naiba yung mundo ko. Lahat ng mga tinuro sa akin ni mami ko kung paano magluto, paano maghugas ng plato, paano maglinis, paano mag-vacuum, yes. Social kami kasi ng barang vacuum, no? And kung paano mag, uh, mag, mag-ayos, mag-tiklot mag, uh, ng damit, yan. Paano maayusin yung kama after using it. Lahat ng mga trinain sa akin ng mami ko, nagulat ako. Pagpasok ko sa seminary, mas lalo na magnify yung mga training na yan. Every day, we would have to clean our beds, fix our room, kailangan maayos lahat. Doon ako natuto, natuto maging ok-ok or obsessive-compulsive. And I realized, sa una, nung high school pa ako, when I was 12 years old, ayoko nga, ayoko yung mga house chores na yan. Ayoko ang gawin yun. But when I decided... To, to dedicate my life to God, to commit my life to God, especially when I entered the seminary. Sabi ko, grabe. I'm so thankful na my mother taught me all those things, trained me, not only in taking care of myself, not only of taking care of the house, but also taking care of my spiritual life. Kasi si mami, mami ko napaka madasaling. She was a very devoted a uh, prayerful person, especially with St. Therese of Lisieux, the Child Jesus, St. Anthony de Padua. That's why naging Anthony din pangalan ko because may devotion siya kay St. Anthony. So when I entered the seminary, mas lalo na gamit ko yung mga skills na, natut- na natutunan ko sa mami ko. But even when I left the seminary, again, long story po yan kung bakit ako umalis ng seminary. but when I left the seminary, and I decided to get married. And now, I am five years married to my wife, Mayan. Pero, I now see, at this age, na 35 years old na ako, yung mga natutunan ko kay mami ko, sa mami ko when I was 12 years old, hanggang ngayon, I'm still using it. In fact, not only am I skilled at it, I believe, sobrang skilled na ako sa paghugas ng plato, sa paglaba, magpaglinis, sa pag-ayos ng gamit sa bahay, na gagamit ko sa buhay mag-asawa. And not only am I doing it because of obligation, but now I am doing it the best I can because of love. And that was the difference. When I was 12 years old na obligado kong gawin yung mga house chores na yan, compared when I started in the seminary at the age of 16, 17, hanggang ngayon. Because when you choose to love Jesus, it's more than just obligations. It's more than just rules. It's more than just traditions. It's more than just rituals. In fact, our spiritual life is like that, no? Once upon a time, I'm sure, 
especially for those na nag-aaral at lumaki sa mga eskwela na Catholic, na Catholic, that you were taught about the Ten Commandments, may nagturo sa inyo para magdasal ng Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Be, yung Rosary. I'm sure somewhere down the line that someone taught you that the Bible are basic instructions before leaving earth. And ganun nga. At first, when we were taught our catechism, it was just all intellectual. It was all head capacity. Pero hindi pa nagsisink in sa puso. And that is what happened nung nag-16 at 17 ako na pumasok ng seminary. Doon ko na-realize, wow, God in fact is in love with me. God is showing to me every day His unconditional love. And because I felt that unconditional love within me, I didn't have to do anything. In fact, I didn't even have to try to gain God's love because God's love was given to me freely. In fact, today we celebrate Happy Divine Mercy Sunday and God's mercy is given freely. And today, I feel that God is continuously pouring His unconditional divine mercy and love into my life. And because I am coming from a point of God's love, what I thought was an obligation, a a need to follow the rule, ngayon has become an expression of my love to God, regardless of where I am. Whether I have chosen the religious life or the married life, or whether you are choosing the blessed singleness life, Wherever you are, when you do things out of love, that's what Mother Teresa said. Service or your acts of service is simply an expression of your love to God. And that's the beauty of what God is doing, that He is after your heart. He is changing your heart. In fact, in God's plan, that is His most important goal, His important mission is that He is so interested, He is so madly, ridiculously, scandalously in love with your heart. So friend, if you're going through a struggle right now, if you're going through something painful right now, if you're facing frustrations, limitations, hindrances, baka right now you are experiencing a financial stumbling block in your career, in your work, especially because of our lockdown, friend, I am affirming you that God is developing your heart. He is doing something behind the scenes because He is growing in your heart. He is using this situation for your good. Amen? Tell someone beside you again, God is after your heart. Gabi, no? That is why today we go back to our scripture verse and we will zero in on what Jesus was telling, no? Sabi ni Jesus. Again, in verse 17, He says, Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. Pero anong ibig sabihin ni Jesus when He says the law and the prophets? Konting background lang na. Because in the religion of Judaism, they truly believe in two strong foundations. Una-una, the law. At ito, ang Torah. Second, are the prophets the two strong foundations of the Judaic religion. Siyempre, unang-una, the law. When Jesus says the law, ang ibig sabihin niya or tinutukoy niya is the Torah. And in Hebrew, the word Torah also means Pentateuch. Yan ang alam natin. No? The first five books of the Bible. Pentateuch also means five books. At ito ang Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Pero alam natin, the Ten Commandments. These are the first ten laws that was given to God to Moses. Pero on top of yung Ten Commandments na yun, the Jews, especially yung mga religious leaders nila, came up with 603 more laws on top of the Ten Commandments. So ibig sabihin, may total of 613 laws. Yan ang Judaic laws na binamanggit ni Jesus. Second are the Prophets. And siyempre, these prophets are the prophets of the Old Testament, the prophets of old. And for those who don't know yet, there are four major prophets in the Old Testament. And these are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. 
And kasama nila may 12 minor prophets at sila po ay Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. And these prophets also have their own books in the Old Testament. And ito ang tinutukoy ni Jesus when he mentions the law and the prophets. And siyempre, these were the things that the Jews were following until today. Pero back then, akala na kasi mga religious leaders, mga Pharisees, that what Jesus was teaching, he was doing away with the law and the prophets. Pero we know that Jesus again in scripture today says that I have come not to do away with the law of Moses or the prophets, but rather I have come to fulfill them and to complete them. That's why talagang mga pareseyo, mga religious teachers ng panahon ni Jesus, init na init umulo nila kay Jesus, kumukulo yung dugo nila kay Jesus. One example was when one Sabbath, one particular Sabbath, syempre alam natin, yung mga Jews, very strict sila on the Sabbath. Bawal magtrabaho, bawal uh, kumilos ng mabigat, bawal magwork ng, ng heavy on, on a Sabbath. So one Sabbath, Jesus with His disciples were walking through a field of, of wheat. And siyempre nagutom mga mga apostles, nagutom mga disipulo while, while walking through that wheat field. So kumuko sila ng grain of wheat while they were walking. Pero at that moment, may dumadan din ng mga religious leaders, mga teachers of the law, at galit na galit sila kay Jesus. Why are you allowing your disciples to pick the grain of wheat on, on the Sabbath? Bakit ngayon pa? Again, kumukulo yung dugo nila kay Jesus. They're always fight, finding a way to put Jesus in trouble. And just a few hours after that incident, syempre si Jesus, on a Sabbath, pumunta sa isang sinagog, sa isang sinagoga. And there, while he was also teaching and listening, may lumapit sa kanya na Jew na may withered hand, na may sakit sa kamay. And syempre mga pareseyo na naman, syempre nandun sila sa gilid, tinitingnan nila, gagawin niya uli. Will he heal this man? And true enough, because Jesus is so compassionate and merciful, at that very moment, on a Sabbath, inside the synagogue pa, Jesus healed the hand, the withering hand of this Jew. And syempre, mga Pharisees again, init na init na naman yung ulo nila. They were so angry. Why did you heal this man on a Sabbath? You can heal him on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Wag lang ngayon sa Sabbath on a Saturday. Wag lang ngayon. But again, we remember what Jesus Himself once said: that man was not made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath was made for man. He was telling us that the law was made for man to grow, to be in love with God, not man for the Sabbath or for the law. But what's even more scandalous? was the friends that Jesus chose. And to talk more about this, to share with us further the message, please welcome Coach JC Libiran. Maraming salamat, Brother Tony Balenzuela. Let's give her a big hand for that great, great foundation. And he was already able to give to us mga important things for us to understand our message for the day that really God is after your heart. And kung may katabi ka, pwede bang bagiti mo sa kanya, God is after your heart. Yun ay kung may katabi ka, ha? <laughs> but you know, as I continue this, really, we have to understand that Jesus came so that men will be able to experience God's love. He came to the sick people. He came to those who are in need. Kaya lahat ng mga ginawa niya sa mabuting balita or in the Gospels is really a scandal for the religious people during his time. And just to share with you no, that I can really connect with this. Now, there was a time in my life years ago na sa pagkocommute ko, ako po ay nabiktima ng mga snatchers. And some of you passively remembers this or maybe this is your first time na marinig itong story na ito. But I'll share it anyway. So it was just one day I was going to Makati sa Buendia, sumakay ako ng bus. And I was in the middle of the bus. And then may amayang konti, may sumakay na grupo ng mga kalalakihan. And they were really there, no, to, uh, you know, something kaiba is that hindi sila ganung kaingay, nagmamasid, nag-observe, and nagmamatyag. And they all sat around me as if parang 
I was in the danger zone. And my gut feel already, you know, yung aking kutob, sabi ko, naku, mukhang in danger ako dito. Endangered species ako. So, I was able to move from the middle area ng bus and then all the way sa no, harapan, no? Uh, nasa likod ako ng driver and, you know, already thinking na tama, safe na ako dito, okay na. Nakalimutan ko na sila, ang dami nang sumakay ng mga tao, napuno na yung bus, siksika na siya. And, uh, you know, someone called me up and I pick up my phone, sinagot ko, pag-usap, saglit, tapos pinalik ko na sa aking bag. And then, when I was about to go down, dahil nakarating na ako dun sa area, kung saan ako bababa, uh, very strange, there was this man, nakaharang sa akin, hinaharang ako, Ayoko kong padaanin. Tapos sa likuran ko, dami mga nagireklamo. Sa so, madalit sabi na wala po ako no, sa grounding and you know, I really felt that something was happening there. Pagbaba ko po ng bus, lo and behold, bukas na ang aking bag. And magic, wala! Wala na yung aking cellphone. And immediately, nakita ko yung taong nasa harapan ko na humaharang sa akin. Siya rin yung unang taong nakita ko pagbaba ko ng bus. And I don't know, maybe by God's grace, binigyan niya ako ng inspirasyon. Ang lumabas sa aking mga salita, doon sa mama, Kuya, tulungan mo naman ako. Nawawala yung cellphone ko. And when you look into the person, ayaw niyang tingnan ako. Yung kanyang body language, talagang parang iniiwasan niya or somehow, uh, in a way, it showed that he is part of it or guilty siya. And hindi ako tumikil. I just kept on asking, tulungan mo ko. Kasi nawawala yung cellphone ko. And then, another person came uh, para sumaklolo at sinabi niya, Naku, nakita ko yung kumuha ng cellphone mo. Nagpunta doon. But you know what? Again, by God's grace, I was able to say words to them. Mga kuya, tulungan niyo ako. Pag natulungan niyo ako, mas matutulungan ko kayo ng higit pa dyan. As I don't know, but you know, during that small chat, I was able to make them confess that they were part of the scheme. Bahagi sila ng modus operandi na, yes, umamin sila, <laughs> would you believe that, na kasama sila at kasabot silang nagkumuha ng aking cellphone. And of course, the unthinkable happened, kasi ang tanong nila sa akin, gusto ba talaga makuha yung cellphone mo? And I was really, you know, just that innocent at sinabi ko, opo, kasi mahalaga-mahalaga yung mga contacts na nasa cellphone ko. Kaya, quick tip lang, kung may mga cellphone kayo at uh, ayaw nyo mangyari yung nangyari sa akin, i- no, i-double uh, nyo na kagad, no? Ibig sabihin, i-save nyo na sa ibang sources, no? O maybe on the cloud or online yung mga numbers nyo para just in case mawala man yung unit, you still have the contacts kasi mas mahalaga yon when it comes to your work, your business, and also with your personal relations. Anyway, back to the story. I was able to uh, encourage them na yes, I need it back. At sinabi nila, sige, willing ka bang sumama sa amin? And yes, the unthinkable also happen. Again, wag niyo pong gagawin ito. Nangyari lang po sa akin ito. Pang mga experts lang. But kidding aside, I went with them. From Makati, bumiyahe kami babalik ng Manila. And along the way, this is what happened. They started sharing to me their secrets, their modus operandi. And they were even giving me a demonstration. Parang as if ako yung apprentice nila. And uh, we were able to reach their area. No? They showed me around. No? Dito bahay namin. No? Dito yung headquarters namin. Dito ko tumatambay. Dito kami kumakain. And, and, and you know what? I was able to enter their world. Parang enter the world of Avatar. Parang malaga no? And really, it was such an experience. No? Uh, maybe that's the reason why I'm sharing it with you. Because I don't want you to go through it. But maybe you can learn from me. Now, to cut the long story short, Kumain kami, no, nag-bonding, no, diba? naging instant friends. <laughs> and then, the rest of the gang came back. Nagsama-sama, nag-assemble sila. And the leader came up to me saying thank you. Kasi hindi mo pinahamak yung mga kasama ko. Hindi ka sumigaw, tinato mo silang tao. And I won't forget that, that particular lines of the leader. Um, you know, after that, they gave back my phone. They even shared with me, okay, mabait yan, bigyan ng cellphone, bigyan ng jacket. O, di ba, lahat na binigay sa akin. But of course, naalala ko po na yun ay maaring mga nakaw, kaya hindi ko po tinanggap. And the whole family of the leader apologized. And from Manila, they brought me to Monumento area near Valenzuela City, where I live. And they were saying to me na, uh, safe ka na ba dito? O, di ba? <laughs> Tinanong talaga akong ganun. Taka... Nakawi po ko ng maayos. No? Well, obvious ba? I'm still sharing this story to you. 
And uh, really, marami pang nangyari. May mga naging follow-up pang experience doon. But what am I sharing with you? Just because I treated them as humans, they treated back yung goodness. So whatever that you put in, ibabalik sa'yo. Kabutihan yung ipinakita ko sa kanila. I even ate with them. I shared stories with them. And then, agaano namin ng bawat isa. Yung loob namin. And then, that's it. And that's precisely what Jesus did. It was a scandal during that time that the religious people, you are eating with this, you know, tax uh, collectors dito sa mga prostitutes, sa mga drunkards na yan, sa mga sinners na yan. Di ba? Parang that was really a scandal, no? Kung may video lang, no? Talagang siguro kumalat na yon. And the religious uh, leaders were really, um, talagang gumahanap sila ng butas, no? Kay Jesus. And as we read this now, we continue in the Gospel of Matthew. And really, this particular passage in Matthew chapter 9, verse 10 to 12, the Matthew that we're talking about here is really the Matthew that we've been sharing, we've been discussing ever since nagsimula tayo, no, noong December pa lang, January, February, March, and now April, we're digging deeper and kapit lang, no? Because really, the Lord is really telling us a lot about this. And let me now read. Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. And I want you just to take it in. Hold that particular scene. Babalikan natin mamaya yan. But uh, really, no? imagine yung kanyang uh, kainan. No? Yung mga kasama niya. No? Talagang ang mga kinakain, lahat ng mga bawal. All against the Torah. No, uh, pork, uh, talagang, if you're gonna imagine, but eat all you can, na talagang lahat ng mga bawal. And that's why we can really say that Jesus befriended the lawbreakers. Yung mga tao talagang hindi sumusunod. And I want you to take note of this. Matthew wrote his gospel around 40 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And scholars believe that understanding that Jesus came to abolish the law, we have to understand that, no? Continued 40 years later. Because by that time, non-Jews were already joining their house churches by multitudes. Early on, almost all Christians were Jews. But then one day, foreigners came knocking. Diba? Knocking at their doors. And they wanted to be part of it. They want to follow Jesus too. And I want you to take note of that. Na, here you are, gathering together, and then all of a sudden, merong mga hindi naman talaga for you to belong. They started now, they wanted, they expressed their desire, we also want to become Jesus' followers. And take note, ha? these are people who are lawbreakers. These are the people that uh, uh, they don't consider no? the part of the chosen people. Uh, in fact, uh, they were even not circumcised no? during that time. But they love Jesus. And they're the ones, no? we say, the gentle Christians, they wanted to eat yung mga bawal sa Torah. No, it's all against the Torah. But still, that's where the tension came in. How can these foreigners follow Jesus but not the Torah? And we can find this out, my dear friends, no? as we try to clarify things. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 20. Don't misunderstand why I have come. This is Jesus speaking. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophet. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. So if you have your Bibles with you, highlight that. Jesus came to accomplish no, their purpose. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So, meron lang mga hindi pagkakaintindihan, but really, Jesus follows the law. But at the same time, He now perfects it. He now completes it. Mas nagkakaroon ng panibagong uh, it's not just the spirit of the law, but the spirit of love is coming in. 
and let's continue. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Because again, the religious leaders during the time of Jesus was so focused on the law. Kailangan gawin nyo to. Kailangan gawin nyo to. Para manalo ka o para maging diba, special ka sa mata ng Diyos. But in the eyes of Jesus, in His heart, ang higit na mahalaga ay yung pagsunod mo ng buong puso. Hindi dahil sa napipilitan ka, pero dahil sumusunod ka, dahil gusto mo. And that's why, kahit na sobrang talagang experts ng mga religious leaders, talagang kabisado nila yung 613 laws, oh, gabi no, 613 laws, eh, yung 10 commandments natin, parang hirap na hirap pa tayong, di ba, i-enumerate o i-list, no? Uh, you know, this brings me to a personal experience. Uh, during the Holy Week, or even before the Holy Week started, um, I, I remember this. No? One of my friends, na isang negosyante, texted me. And ang sinabi niya sa text, I want to know more Jesus. Tapos alam mo, pagkaakita ko, talagang wow! Parang that was something. I, nor- I don't normally receive text message like that. Alam mo, ang sagot ko agad, same here, I want to know Jesus more. <laughs> so, we agreed to do it together and ang aming naging resolution is why not we do an online Bible study? And I'm showing to you a photo now of that group uh, and really it was it was, it, it was a journey. Kahit na, ayan, medyo turning uh, three weeks pa lang naman. No? It's just at the beginning uh, stage. But really what I'm amazed is that people are longing for Jesus. People want to experience Jesus. And through that Bible study, you know, that was really a revelation for me na ni ibig sabihin na, you know, you're already a Catholic, that you already know everything. Kadalasan, yan ang ginagawa, no? Natatanong tayo ng ibang mga sekta, ng ibang religion, no? Uh, kung gaano mo kaalam yung pananampalataya mo. And you don't want to answer, it's because, kasi minana ko to sa pamilya namin. Kasi sinabi ng nanay at tatay ko, nung sinabi sa akin ng pare, hindi what you want now is, it's no longer because it was passed on to you. Parang wala kang choice. No. Now, as you mature in your Christian faith, your Catholic faith, you're saying that I have decided, this is my personal choice, na mas lalong lumalim yung pananampalataya ko sa Panginoon Diyos. And we can actually connect it also in the academe. See, why do people go to school? Ba't nga ba nagpupunta mga tao sa eskwelahan? Para lang ba, di ba, may magawa, dal board, or somehow, para lang ba gumawa ng mga assignments. You see, all of those problem solving, no? I remember that, no? yung math, no? talagang yung mga tao. but ba may math, no? Ano bang halaga nito? Favorite subject ko lang nun ay math. Merienda, agahan, tangalian, hapunan. Anyway, but uh, uh, akala ko walang halaga. But actually, kaya pala may mga problem solving is because it's preparing you for the problems that you're going to solve in life. You see, the school was just a stage, but it's preparing you to something bigger. And that is to learn and to be an eternal student so that you can live in the real world and you can apply the things that we have learned. I can connect it with our three-year-old daughter, Yana, and uh, really, uh, we are amazed. Of course, Maliit siya dati, tapos talagang so cute, tapos unti-unti, di ba, from uh, crawling, di ba, unti-unti, ayan, naglalakad na, and then she's advancing by the days, and there are even words na talagang sobrang uh, natututunan niya by herself, of course, with uh, what she hears, what we are teaching her, of course, in the media as well, yung mga nakikita niya, and of course, we're here as parents, kami dalawa ni Milen, no? You're seeing this uh, actually during the celebration of Milen's uh, birthday. At uh, nga pala yung mga nagsa-celebrate ng March, April, or during quarantine, bumawi na lang tayo ha, kapag uh, natapos to. Mag-comment kayo kung birthday nyo at uh, batiin nyo ang bawat isa dyan sa comment section. But really, let's celebrate life amidst all of this quarantine. But my point as I go back is that uh, there will come a point in time that talagang, yes, ngayon ginagay namin si Yana, but we don't want her na ma-forced sa lahat ng mga bagay, no? Uh, like, uh, you know, being good to people, being respectful, you know, being happy, being positive. We want her eventually na hindi na dahil sinabi namin, pero dahil ginusto niya. Because that's the right thing to do. And she has mature already. Paunti-unti. 
And I believe that's also the same thing when it comes to our Christian life. You see, mahalagang mahalaga to, ha? we have to understand that the law is a school of the heart and whose purpose is to teach people to follow God in the world. Mahalaga yung mga batas, but it's preparing us to love more. It's preparing us to follow the Lord wholeheartedly, not just sa minds natin, not just because sinabi sa atin. And even Prophet Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 to 33, allow me to read this. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand, by the hand, and brought them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant. Though I love them as a husband loves his wife, says the Lord. Let's continue. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my instruction deep within them and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. You see, the context of that is for the, uh, the, the chosen people, they need to go to the temple para masabi na talagang nakapag-worship sila kay Lord. But here, Prophet Jeremiah is actually telling, darating yung time na ano, na hindi mo kailangan pumunta sa temple para ma-worship mo siya. Because wherever you are, where your heart is, that's where God is. Medyo konektado-konektado, no? Sa nangyayari sa atin ngayon. And, you know, this comic strip that I'm showing to you speaks something about that, no? Na meron raw uh, Satan, no? talaga naikipagtalo kay Jesus at sabi niya, with COVID-19, I close your churches. Grabe, no? Kasi wala nga talagang mga simbahan na bukas. No? Lahat tayo nasa mga bahay. But on the contrary, ang sabi ni Jesus, I just open one in every home. So, sa bawat tahanan natin, just like what we're doing right now, this feast online experience every Sunday, you may not be in the physical church, but you, the family, together with your friends, online, we are connected. And that's why, my dear friends, grabe. This COVID-19, this pandemic, this lockdown, we may see it really all the negatives, but look at the brighter side of it. Di ba mas meron tayong time ngayon sa pamilya natin? Di ba mas meron tayong time para magsama-sama every Sunday or even beyond that? Let's, di ba, know the Word of God. You read yung ating mga readings for the day. You can use the Feast app that we have. Again, our one big message is this. God is after your heart. Hindi lang kung ano yung mga ginawa mo o ginagawa mo. But really, yung bang ginagawa mo, do you put your heart on it? And just to bring this to a close, you know, I remember this story about uh, sa dalawang couple and they're making their vows in front of the priest. At uh, syempre, tinatawa nung pare, no? So, uh, tinatanggap mo ba na uh, itong asawa mo at para magkasama kayo habang buhay. So, of course, no? alam natin yung normal na mga sagot, pero medyo kakaiba yung naging sagot ng lalaki. No? Si Ruhelo at si Amanda. Si Ruhelo sabi niya, uh, uh, pinapangako ko na uh, bibigay ko sa kanya ang sweldo ko tuwing 15. Mas parang, ha? Parang medyo kakaiba yung sagot. No? Kahit yung mga tao, ta- ta- talagang yun ba? but you're expecting something else no ah ipapangako ko na ibibigay ko sa kanya yung yung oras ko no out of 100% ibibigay ko 40% that's parang ah ta- 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 yun ba talaga yung dapat isagot ah uh, uh, ibibigay ko yung aking um, effort sa kanya yung energy ko ng mga 40% so parang pagtingin mo no yung pera 20% <laughs> yung uh, oras diba 40% yung effort energy 40% so para 100% no but really if we're going to look at that funny uh, situation about that person sharing yung kanyang vows, hindi yun yung expect natin. You see, that's what the old covenant is about. The old covenant is about duty, kung ano yung kailangan mong gawin. But really, the new covenant is about devotion. It's a decision that comes from the heart. The old covenant is more on the hands, the doing. Pero ang pinakamahalaga, again, is what your heart, where your heart is. And friends, let's try now to go back dun sa scenario na pinag-usapan natin kanina of Jesus dining with the drunkards, prostitutes. Balik natin yung Matthew 22 verses 35 to 36. One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, 
Remember this, di ba? Sabi sa kanya, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? This is what we have to understand. You must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Now, let me share that with you. Pwede naman talagang sabihin niya yung 613 laws. And they're trying to really look sa butas para they can really pin down Jesus and they can really charge blasphemy against no, Jesus. But again, the mind of Jesus, the heart of Jesus is really in place. Kaya ito, kinote niya rin, no? And again, this is also part of their uh, laws and reading. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 40. Love, or you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. That was, kung sa basketball, parang supalpal. <laughs> tama yung naging sagot ni Jesus. Kasi tama naman talaga na it's not just you're after all the laws. But really, what matters most there is Jesus was having a party of forgiveness, of mercy, of love. Yun yung mas mahalaga para sa kaharian ng Diyos na tanggapin natin. Let's be inclusive, not just exclusive. And during this time, napakahalaga niyan para sa atin. Still, the same formula that Jesus, that's why it, it's, up until now, it's working na minahal niya ito mga tao no? sa kabila ng kanilang kakulangan, sa kabila ng kanilang mga pagkakamali. Kung baga, the Lord is telling you, mahal kita, maging sino ka man. Mahal ka ng Diyos, maging sino ka man. And nothing can ever change that. Even during this time of trial, of crisis, of lockdown. And we can really connect that parties of forgiveness sa ating misa, sa banal na misa. And alam ko, miss na misa natin yung misa. Hindi tayo makatanggap. But we're encouraged to have this spiritual communion. I'm showing to you a photo of a priest, an Italian priest, na yes, wala man yung mga parishioners niya because of the COVID-19 crisis at people are in lockdown, but wala makakapigil. Kapag mimisa pa rin siya. And most of the mass now are live streaming. You get to experience that here as well. And really, my dear friends, it's the love of God that unites us all. Nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. From the love of God, really. And this is the truth. Only love changes us. Because only love can reach the depths of our hearts. And that's why, ang trabaho natin, hindi po nahin yung mga pagkakamali ng bawat isa. It's not just to be just right. But it's also to be kind. To be loving. During this time as well, napakahalaga niyan. Madali tayong pumuna ng pangit. Pero ano yung maganda? Ano yung pwede nating mas pakita na kabutihan sa bawat isa? I want to encourage you, my dear friends, that during this time, our hearts, our lives are being tested. And God is really after what's in your heart. Ano ang nasa puso mo ngayon? Si Jesus ba? Are you just following Him because you were told to? Are you just following it because you're following the law or you're following the Lord because it comes from your heart. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, maraming maraming salamat sa pagkakataong ibinigay niyo sa amin muli ngayon na kami ay makapakinig at matanggap namin ang iyong salita, ang iyong mensahe. Lord, talagang kailangan-kailangan namin ng pag-asa. Kailangan-kailangan namin ng inspirasyon. Kailangan-kailangan namin, Panginoon, ng encouragement during this time because we're really going through tough times. Apektado yung aming pamilya, apektado yung aming hanap buhay, apektado yung aming trabaho, apektado yung aming negosyo. Ang dami mga tao na apekto, and most especially, we're also afraid, we're also worried, Lord. Not just for ourselves, sa pamilya namin, sa labuan sa amin, but also to those people who are fighting this uh, COVID-19, uh, this pandemic, Lord, all the frontliners, all those people who are involved, and they're making their ways, Lord. And that's why, Lord, we're entrusting to you everything that you are in control. And during this time, Lord, yes, we will follow the law, not just because we were told to. We will follow the law 
what the government is telling us, the local uh, government as well is telling us, yung mga reminders sa amin, not just because para lang masabing nasunod namin, but we're following it because you know, Lord, that this is also best for us. Lord, may mga prayers po yung aming mga kasama, yung mga nanonood ngayon, those people who are making this possible as well, we're praying for them, that you bless them. And again, Lord, be with us during this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's come before our God and let's just worship Him from the, our hearts. Let's give our heart to Jesus. Let's make Him the first in our lives. Amen. Jesus, have your way in me now. 
Let's continue to give clap and an offering of praise to our God. Palakpangan natin ang Diyos. Thank you, O God. Thank you so much for your goodness. We worship you and acknowledge your presence here in this place. Amen and amen. Friends, I want to pray for your dreams. So if you have your novena to God's love with you right now, please bring it out. But if you don't have it with you or you don't have one yet, especially for our first timers, okay lang po. Just uh, lift up your hands if it is a comfortable position for you or a gesture of prayer. And I want to pray for your dreams today. It's all right? Father, I want to pray for all of our dreams today. We want to lift up to you all of these dreams that you have planted in our hearts, these seeds of love, these seeds of hope, these seeds of faith in our hearts, Lord God. Despite the things that are happening around us, this lockdown right now, Lord God, we know that you are using this situation for the good of those who love you. Father, we lift up to you these dreams. And we know these dreams are not dreams of pride, but rather dreams of purpose because these dreams are not just for our own good, but for the good of those around us and those we love. Our, our dreams, Lord God, are your dreams. And these are like mustard seeds that in time will grow to be a beautiful tree that will bless others around us. And thank you, O God, in advance because we know that in your perfect time, these dreams they're a work in progress and we know that you are working for them behind the scenes because you are after our hearts. And for all of these things, we lift up in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, O God. Thank you, Jesus, for these dreams. Thank you for your goodness. So friends, maraming maraming salamat ulit. Thank you so much for watching us and for joining us here at the PM feast live stream and we hope to see you next sunday and we invite you and inform you that next sunday it will have our we will have our new time slot which is 1 p.m no longer will it be 1 45 1 p.m and we hope to reach as many viewers as possible so if you were touched you were blessed by god's message today please feel free to share this link feel free to share our posts with those that you believe are in need of God's word and God's message for today. And for those who feel that they would want to give, we want to open this opportunity for you to give your tithes on a weekly basis, on a regular basis. And just to inform you that your tithes, although we do not have a regular venue like the PICC for the moment, we are reaching out to the many mercy ministries of the Light of Jesus family. Just a few to name, we have He Cares uh, Foundation, we have Tahanan ng Pagmamahal, we have Anna Wim. These are the many mercy ministries that the Light of Jesus with Brother Bo have put up and we are helping them sustain at this time of the quarantine. And the Feast, the Feast Bay Area in particular, are also reaching out to our frontliners, to hospitals, donating PPEs or personal protective equipment to all those frontliners in the hospitals as well. So with your giving, we are able to help them, sustain them, give hope and give strength to our frontliners who are fighting uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and reaching out sa mga kabubayan natin. So for your giving, we will have the details on the screen. If you want to give, it is on our Union Bank, Timog branch. If you're giving checks, our account name is The Builder of the Light of Jesus Family, Mega Manila Feast Bay Area Incorporated. And our bank account number is 000 4248 Six zero. Ulitin ko po, it's triple zero four thousand two four eight six zero. So thank you so much in advance for your giving. We hope that you continue to open up your generous hearts to all of us and make an impact on the people that we touch. And in advance, I want to pray for your giving. Father, we want to pray for all the blessings for your provisions. We pray for all of the generous hearts that you are calling to give today. For the coming week, O oh God, sustain us, provide for us. We know, O oh God, that you, uh, you are a God of goodness, you are a God of provision, that when we give, you always give back a hundredfold, even a thousandfold. But it is not just the receiving that we look forward, O oh God, but that in giving, it is an act of worship to you, our God, our Savior, our provider. We know that when we give, we are worshiping you in return. For all of this, we thank you that you are allowing us to bless others in return because you are blessing us abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 
And we make the sign of God's love for us in the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. See you next Sunday, 1 p.m. And we are excited to bless even more. And we hope you get to also invite others as well to join watching you our PM Feast live stream. Dito kung saan merong magandang mangyayari sa'yo. God bless you! Mayroong magandang mangyayari 